Humbly, welcome back to the channel. We have another PlayStation 4. This one had a sticker on it. Blue Light of Death. Now, I did pay a friend for this one, Jack, Mr. Jack Dobbins. I think I paid him. Oh, this came in a, in a, this was in a crate of stuff. This was in a crate of stuff that I paid 20 quid for. Um, it had a load of Xbox parts and stuff. Um, at this Xbox One S. Um, it's got no bottom. Um, this one was actually working, but it's a banned console. So I shall keep that for testing so I can sell one of mine. Um, also came with a PS3 backwards compatible that I paid £10 for. That one has the yellow light of death and I've plugged that one in and the RSX chips are knackered. Um, and a load of other Xbox One original stuff. I've got another one working that's a band console. So yeah, a lot of band consoles I've got of him. Uh, so we're down to this one now, this PS4. It says blue light of death, but we've got it plugged in. And basically, blue light's on, goes straight off. Beeps on, and goes off. And then nothing. This is one of the original first ones with the, the touch sensitive buttons. Yeah, it's now dead. So if we unplug it again, leave it a few, uh, few seconds, plug it back in, wait for it to liven up, beep, blue light, and off. So I've not got a clue what's wrong with this. I wouldn't have, I wouldn't really call it a blue light of death. I thought that was a flashing blue light, a blue light of death. Uh, but let's get this apart and see if we can find anything obvious um some people say it could be the power supply now i do have another one of these that's my own so i think first things first i'm going to get this apart and just swap my power supply into here and see if it makes any difference all right so join me when this is in bits I've got screws everywhere at the minute Oh and yeah, obviously you've seen it's got a nice bit of a nice bit of rust, a bit of patina on it. It's obviously been opened before because it's got no warranty stickers on it. on the disk drive. I think it's had some water in it. It's not looking happy down here. Oh well. Oh No rust underneath. The rust down this side. Yeah, another one that's overheated. You can see all the little bubbles in there. Got a lot of rust around the battery area. Apart from that, I'm not seeing much wrong with this board. The HDMI port has been, that's not meant to be bent up at that angle, is it? I have to get my microscope on that, that's all bent up. So it definitely needs a new port. Would that be the reason it's not turning on? What have we got on our rusty old battery here? 2.8 volts, that battery's no good. That'll be changing, if we ever get it working. Let's get that out of there. All right, let's have a poke around, see if we can find any shorts. 
or anything that looks like a short and I shall come back to you. I'll show you the boring bit. 0 0.4, 0 0.4, okay. Where's me inductors? What's this one down here? 0 0.1, 0 0.176, 0 0.08. Now I think that's normal for these ones. 0 0.034. I don't know what I'm measuring both sides. 0 0.034. 0 0.034, 0 0.016. Like I said, I think that is normal. Right, I've had a quick look over the board. Can't really find much wrong with that at the moment, so we're going to turn our attention to the power supply again. A bit like we did in the last video, really. Um, I was just actually checking this, and I shall show you what I found. Let's put that in there. Right, I'm just going to plug that in. So it's now live. Got my probes tangled up in it. Right, so you can see, let's go on a voltage. So I believe the second pin in is our ground, second from the top there. So if we go on there, we're getting our 5 volts, 4.8 volts on the first pin. 0 on the third, 5 volts again on the last pin. That was 0, wasn't it? Yeah, 0 on there. 5 volts. So I think it's the same again as the last one. Uh, we short our first and our third pin to turn it on. But if we stick our probes into there, getting ready for our 12 volts. Can't remember which way around it goes, but it doesn't matter. It will just show a negative up if they're the wrong way around. So if we put a wire on our first pin, and if we go to our third, that should be turned on. And I'm still getting zero volts. And then what I was doing to test this, I went back to here. So we put our ground back in the second pin, that in the first. And the power, you can see the power supply is shut down. One volt and dropping. 1.2 so our 5 volts have gone so the power supply has shut itself off so it looks like the problem with this PS4 is the power supply again so let's get this apart be very careful because there can be um, high voltage caps in here that are going to hold their charge so what we've got one screw down in the middle so yeah, don't be touching any metal in there yet until you know this is uh, safe to touch. Let's see how easy this one comes apart. So is that it? One screw. Do, 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 do. Let's get another one. Hold that in there, stop, try and stop it from closing itself. Oh, isn't there one down in there? There is. It's a little screw down in there. Thought there was one more in this power supply. Just down behind the 12 volt pins. We're done. One small broken bit of plastic. I'm happy with that. All right, and like I say, be careful with this. That's a 250 volt cap, so um, a 450 volt cap. So that could be holding at least three to 400 volts, up to 450. But they never run. They never run at full whack. Let's see what we've got in here. See, 190 volts in that one still. 190 volts in there. What have we got in the other one? 
190 volts as well. So let's get them discharged. Let's see, can I show you doing this? It's like you might have seen on the other video. I've got like a discharger here. It's just got a couple of um, wait, two watts, 27 kilo ohms um, resistors on there. So this will sl slowly drain the cap. So if I get these pins on here, you should see this slowly start going down. Oh, I've come off of it. Hang on. That didn't quite work out, but there you go. 18, 16, 15, 14, 10. It just slowly discharges these capacitors. Okay, we're down to one volt now. That is safe to touch. Now we've got to find out what is going on with this. I mean, obviously, we're getting our five volts, so our fuse is going to be fine. Have we got any other fuses in here? The other power supply had two fuses, but nope, this has only got one. Can't see anything. What we got on this resistor? Let's check this resistor down here. Zero ohms across that resistor. That's, uh, that can't be right. It can't be right. Zero ohms across this resistor. Why am I reading zero? Why am I reading zero ohms across resistors? Right, let's check out the other side of the board. See if there's uh, anything we can spot with our eye that's wrong with this board. So with my naked eye, there is nothing that I can spot. Diode's good. Diode's good. Right, I'm just going to have to go around here, check some stuff. Now, we haven't got the same chip that we have in the other power supply. So that's going to be a bugger if a chip's gone again. Right, let me have a look around here and see what I can spot. And I'll come back if I find anything. Right, okay, several days later now, it's probably even a week later, um, I've given up looking at this thing. I cannot figure out why it is shutting down whenever you try and put the 12 volts on. It is beyond me, and sometimes you got to know when to give up. When you're, you know, when you're not sure, when you don't really know what you're doing, you're still learning, I'm still learning myself. Uh, but you've got to know when enough is enough. So, we went and bought one. <laughs> uh, bought exactly the same model. I think I paid 23... Yeah, was it? Paid £23.99 on that one. Free post. So, £24 for a power supply when I don't even know if that PS4 is working. So... I mean, I could, I could take this one apart and start, you know, measuring different resistances and stuff around there. Maybe I'll do that. But for now, let's get the rotten PlayStation out. So yeah, this, this was the one that's got corrosion everywhere, rust all over the top. Had the blue light of death written on it. And rust all over the bottom. So, all right, let's plug this in, see what happens. Um, I don't even don't even know if it's going to work with that that um, HDMI port that was really bent up. So, let's plug this into this one. Uh, 
you make sure it goes down level because you don't want to put those two pins in the same hole. You want to make sure that's on properly. And okay, let's flip this one over. Power cable in, plug on, or plug in, whatever you want. Okay, right, just gonna move that over so we can see this properly. And is this gonna work? Blue light, blue light staying on. Not going off. Let me turn that light out so you can probably see it a bit better. And yes, we have gone. We've got a white light. We are on. Right, now, shall I put the HDMI lead in? Please don't go bang or anything. I've looked in the port. Inside the port looks all right. And the outside the port looks all right. Let's put the TV on, see if we get anything. And we're on. It is working. Right, let me just plug a, a remote in here and sync it up. It's very loose on there. Okay, press the PlayStation button and we're in. So it looks like this has been reset. Be on user one. So was this last reset in 2015? Seven years ago. Seven years ago this has been reset and hasn't been used. Do we have save data or anything on here? No, I mean there's no games or applications. What version are we running on here? Out the system. System information. Jesus Christ, 2.55. What are we on now? About 9 or 10? 255, that's crazy. Well, I've just looked up online. I think 255 came out in 2015. So that's crazy. So this has been sat somewhere for seven years. And it was obviously reset. It was obviously reset in July 17. Um, July 2015. Wow. Okay, so let's uh, shut this down. Right, so there we go. We're, we are off again. So, yeah, buy me. That is amazing. You can see. Let me take the power out a minute. Let me show you this HDMI cable. It should be pointing straight out the back but look at the angle look at the angle that HDMI is on that should be coming coming out straight <laughs> it's like that um, so although that works I mean there's no way I can sell this in this condition let's rip that blue light of death sticker off there now so unless I can flop this swap this frame out with something else or I don't know whether that will be in the same as the one in the PS4 that I'm going to keep. I usually like to... <laughs> I keep the PS4s that are in the worst condition. This hasn't got a uh, hard disk cover, or the cover that goes over here, but you can easily buy one of them. Uh, no, this one, actually, no, this one's different to the one I've got underneath here. Uh, so do I keep this one, or do I sell this one? Supposedly it's worth more money because of the low system software let's get this one fully back apart we're going to have to change the hdmi port i've already um already bought some i've got some um ps4 
HDMI port spare. So let's get this apart and uh, see if we can change it. I've never changed an HDMI port, so this is going to be a first for me. Hopefully you saw this earlier on, but that is the state of the port. It is bent right upwards. I mean, it could be possible that you could bend that back down, but there's no way I'd want to because those pins in there, they're so fine. You could easily rip those traces off the board trying to bend this back down. I'm surprised it hasn't done any damage to the board as it is. Right, so before I start on there, I'm going to take the change, um, or change, I'm going to put some leaded solder on these legs. This board is going to soak up the heat. So I've got my big tip on. I'm going to get some leaded solder on there to try and lower the melting point in here. just want to hold the iron on there so the heat gets down through the board, through the pins. It really gets that solder in. I've actually got my iron set to 470 degrees. Usually that would be overkill, but for this board it just sucks the heat out. Like I say, this is the first one I've done. And all I've done is watched other YouTubers changing ports. I'm just copying what everyone else does. You can't like see that it hasn't really come through to the other side of the board. You definitely need extra heat with this. All right, I'm going to heat the board up from underneath. I could heat from the top just to get this off. But we are surrounded by plastic there. Oh, was. We are surrounded by plastic here. And we've got plastic on the bottom of this one. So I might try and cover these up with some Kapton tape. And this board does look... This board does look a little bit wavy along there. This board doesn't look dead straight. But it's working, we know it's working. I think if I had low melt solder, my first attempt at doing one of these would probably be to use low melt solder. But I haven't got any. So I'm wondering if I should just try and clear these ground holes. I don't think it's going to happen. Let's try and get most of this rid of most of this with a solder or sucker. The yeah, solder sucker. Or is that pointless? Try using a bit of wick instead. I don't think this is going to work. Let's bring in a bit of heat to help. It's got rid of some of it, but. No, that's not going to work. Let's get some solder back on here. We're just going to use the uh, get some solder back on here. We we'll use the heat from underneath. Sorry, just realised I wasn't in the shot there. Yeah, so this captain tape, it's heat resistant, but it's not like it's heat proof. So it's just hopefully going to help stop that plastic melting. Otherwise, I'm going to have to get other ports as well. Get some flux down here to help the uh, solder flow, hopefully. I'm just going to put some an old metal frame underneath there, hang it over the edge of my desk. 
All right, now I'm just going to heat this up and hopefully that port will drop out. Once we see this solder start melting, we should be okay. Right, let's give this a go, see what happens. Let's hope I don't kill it. Warm around the board up as well. I'm just going to whack it up to 480 degrees, as so I'm not worried about this this port. Now we go in, see if we can get this off. Temp number one fell so far. <laughs> If the solder this side is melting or not. I'm coming inside. Doing this all the angles where I can't even see what I'm doing. got some melted plastic in there hopefully we've still got all of our pens and we haven't ripped any traces I'm gonna need a magnifying glass to look down in the line phew we're looking good so far I'm just going to touch up these pins with a bit of uh, leaded solder. Get some leaded solder in here because I'm going to actually try and drop the new port straight back on. This is minute, just looking through the eyes. No wonder people use a uh, microscope for this work. Looking from my camera, that looks all right. <laughs> I might have to get my microscope out to have a quick look at here. Let me clean this up now. Clean this up, get the flux off. Alright, well I am happy.
of that. I'm pretty well chuffed with that in fact. Whew, it's nerve wracking, I'm sweating. Let me have a two second break. Well, I've had my tea break. So let's get on with putting this back on. I probably should have done it while the board was still warm. But anyway, let's get some flux on there. I'll put a slightly bigger nozzle on my air gun now. Also got the new, new port ready. So I'm going to heat this up from underneath. I'll heat this up from underneath the board. And hopefully we're going to drop our new port on. See I sold them out and now it's being sucked in through the holes. Making a mess of picking this port up. Right, so I'm just now going to drop this port down through the holes, hopefully. It's not working, is it? Nearly, but not quite. Right, attempt number two. I think my, uh, I think the feet, the grounding pins weren't quite straight on that one. So that's why it didn't flop straight in. So you can see our solder starting to melt now. I think we're in. We're down flat. It's just a different grip on it. Hopefully that is that. I can't see if the pins are lined up yet. I think I'm going to have to get my microscope out for that. Right, let's get this under the microscope. I think one of them pins is uh, is bent up. Probably where I dropped it on the floor. Right, and enter my cheap microscope. Yeah, and they are not lined up at all. Is this just a crappy cheap port? It all needs to be shoved over to the left. Right, well, I thought I was filming on my microscope, but I'm not. Um, some of these pins weren't quite connected, so all we've done on here is put a bit of flux in there, and then we just gone in and touched our pins up. These things are absolutely tiny. So we've just gone in to make sure our pins are connected. It's probably a bit hard to see with all the flux in here. But these things are absolutely tiny. So I did heat the the port up again and just shove it over so it was nearer the pins because when we first put it on it wasn't quite lined up with the pins. So we had to reheat it up and just shove it over a bit. And then we've just gone through each individual pin and just touched them up to try and make sure they're soldered. Uh, I thought I was recording it but 
I wasn't. But there, hopefully that should all be soldered now. So I'm just going to get some IPA on there. We'll clean all that flux out. And then we can check whether all our pins are connected properly. It's got a lot of glare on here at the moment. Let's try and take the overhead light out. Just a bit in the shadows now. Give that a little dry with a heat gun. And now we're just going to get our pair of tweezers and see if any of these pins are moving. I want to make sure they're all soldered. Not pushing too hard because these pins will move pretty easily if they're not soldered. All looking good. No, that one's not. See, that one is moving. So again, just get a tiny bit of flux in there. That moved. Solder just on the tip. Trouble is, this is such a fine tip, the solder wants to go up. Just wants to go up the tip. The solder wants to go where the most heat is, and obviously, there's not as much heat down on the very fine tip. Turn the microscope light on, it's rubbish. Can't see much. Right, come on, be soldered. Yep, that is soldered now. Just look down there. We want to make sure we haven't got any little solder bridges. Is that a solder bridge in there? Or is that just a reflection of the light? Not too sure, but it's by that second hole. Let's just see if we can... made it worse. Now we've got bridging. Let's clean our tip. Some people make this look so easy and it is not. That is just getting worse. So we're gonna need to get a bit more flux on there. So I might just have to get a tiny bit of solder wick in here as well, just to try and wick that away. I'm doing this at right awkward angles under this microscope. There we go. 
Got you that time. Just touch those couple up as well where I've been. All right, let's see if they move. Oh. Solid. Right, so they're all on with no bridges. Some of the pins in the middle there just look a bit, you know, gaps look different slightly, but they're on, they're on their pins. Let's have another clean down and we'll get this all back together. I don't think it's too bad for my first my first effort. First attempt at changing the HDMI port. Don't think there's any uh don't mean there's any bridging under there. I think it's probably just liquid. Let's try and dry it out. Liquid or flux. Right, we could always go on a continuity test to see if we've shorted anything. No, those two are fine. Those two, so it'll beep if I'm touching. Fine. 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 So they're the ones I was worried about. I think these are absolutely fine. Nothing short in. None of the pins are short together. Oh, nearly dropped it. Okay. Cheapest microscope in the world. Got that for about 25 quid at some auction. That is uh, um, that sell returns pallets. Right, so now we can take off take off our Capton tape. Got any damage to the plastic on the back, which is good. Hopefully, heating up from the back, I haven't damaged anything under there. But yeah, all our all our plastic connectors are fine. Let's give the um, back of the board a clean up. Also, need to touch up these uh, grounding pins actually while I'm here. Right, let's just get some flux on these on the ground pins. Give it a bit of help in hand with some hot air. Too much high on it, the board will uh, caught fall out again. Hard to see, but I think that will do. Let's get this flux off while it's still warm. Not straight, looks clean. Probably melted the plastic on the back of that port a bit. Right, let's put it back together. See if I've killed it. Let's put a new battery. The other one was just about three volts. So that's in there. How's our port? Our port's sitting nice in that hole. Dual record, right, let's turn it on. Blue lights. Give me a signal. 
<laughs> yeah, my first HDMI port change. Give it a... Doesn't like the wiggle test. Doesn't like me wiggling it, I'm just going to clean it. Well, well that's sounding alright and that's looking alright. I can't see anything wrong with the screen. Yes. Let's turn that big light out. Let's turn all this off. Right, so there we go. This is a bit dark, isn't it? So there we go. There we have it. That's my first ever HDMI port change. Um, they make it look easier on the other YouTube channels, but it wasn't too bad. A bit stressful doing your first one when you've got a working PlayStation and you could possibly kill it. But it went quite well. It's working. Um, all that's left to do with this one is give it a good clean up. Don't know what I'm going to do with this, like rust on there. I'll just maybe just sand it down sand it down re-spray it with a gray primer or something who knows uh but yeah just going to give it a good old clean out now good old clean down and then this one will be ready to sell some firmware 2.55 which should make it more expensive but i don't know they all seem to sell for pretty much the same price whether it's low software or the higher software because if you have the or firmware because the lower the firmware, um, the more exploitable. They have exploitable versions they can put on there so you can put your own software on it. But I've never done it. And that's down a rabbit hole. So thanks to Jack Dobbins for giving me the opportunity to buy all these like spares and repairs consoles. This was one from him and a job lot of like 20 quid of uh, this PS4, the banned Xbox One S, the banned Xbox One original. Um, and then there was another three boards in there, two of scrap or for spares and repairs. And the other one we got working in another video, I think I've already done an output or put out. Uh, but that's it. Hope you like this video. Please like, please comment, please subscribe, hit the notification bell so you see when I upload new videos. And uh, thanks for watching. I'll see you in the next one. God knows what we're doing.